Yeah, but it just feels good, like, like for this endeavor, this project that we're currently on, we did it 100% completely ourselves, yeah. right? Yes. And with this new project, we're getting help from, from people who are professionals, man. Yeah, well, uh, yes. Well, now, wait a minute. <laughs> are we not? Well, we're not getting paid. I don't exactly. Care. I mean, these guys ain't getting paid yet. No, no. <laughs> they have gotten paid for other things. I mean, we pulled in a favor to from our friends, yeah, but we, they are professionals at what they do. They are professionals. They're just not professional for us. Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. The guy that's buying a lottery ticket every week has a plan for the time. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. I don't want that win. I want the last 10 minutes back. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I'm all about some fart filtering. Two guys, one podcast. She's wrong, but let's let's hear what she has to say. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I'm sorry, what did you think it was? It's what I know it is. Okay. Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. nice getting getting feedback and input and giving back output like it's i for just a minute in like you know how like every choice that you make sends off a parallel world i want to live in the parallel world where you said you know getting to know you (laughs) getting to know all about you it is yes getting Getting to to know getting to know and i immediately getting to know you getting to know all about you look motherfucker i'm been trying to open this up for you to fucking plug the new project and team procreate and you're not taking it i we we did that last week i'm gonna do it again we haven't started the show yet you've you've been recording yeah i have we were so why not lay this down (laughs) we laid it down no i mean with the I like to do it in order. I like to do it in order. Why? We're going to start the show now. Because you do the things in the order of the things that you want it to be, and then you Dude, don't have it's to call, It's called them. editing. You're the one that does it. Indeed. That's, I don't want to. So wanna... if we just laid it, if we had just laid that down, right, if, if you had just hit that. Uh, hit my mark. I don't know what the fuck the, the radio term is. Uh, the pole. But if you, <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> that's not what it's called. No, but if you uh, if you just dropped in that promo, mm-hmm. it'd been done, and you could have put it fucking anywhere in the show you wanted. Yeah, sure, but now I can just say it where I want it, <laughs> and then I don't have to magic dude, it there. Dude, look, I don't do a whole lot of prep for the show. Okay, <laughs> I don't. I don't edit the show. Okay, but I do understand my job within the show. <laughs> it's, it's, and generally, that's just to be the setup, man. I described you as I just hilarious did the, talent. I just did the setup. And you got left hanging? You're yeah. Saying I, I just I left did, you hanging? I, motherfucker, I just did work for you. Now you're just out there, hail Hydran? <sighs> I feel like we're about to break the band up, man. This is how it starts. Oh, yeah? Yep, that's how it starts. Next is going to be creative differences. Then one of us starts dating Yoko Ono. Hey, as soon as we make money, we're breaking up because then that's what's going to be the downfall. <laughs> I can't wait until we see our uh, E behind the music. No, but you know what? I was thinking about this. VH1 um, behind the music, I guess. I was thinking about this. Uh, e true Hollywood story. Which one would we'd be a true Hollywood story probably, huh? The true Hollywood story of Two Guys, One Podcast. How is that a Hollywood story? We're not even in Hollywood. I'm saying, but after we're we not be- even famous. After we become famous, and then we break up because of creative differences they don't do and radio greediness. People on Hollywood. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a TV show then. Their success was their downfall. More after this on the E True Hollywood Story. Oh, I'd do some fucked up shit to get broken up. <laughs> <laughs> I- I'm just. I'm just saying, if it ended, man, if it ends, I'm going to make sure it ends fucking horrifically. You're saying if you're going down, go down in a blaze of glory. All right. Uh, Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. No blazes of glory for us. Uh, I mean, not yet, anyway. Uh, You got to have some glory before you can blaze. (laughs) 
Uh, so thanks for checking out our show. Two guys one pod.com is where you can find us. You can also find us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. All search Two Guys One Pod or Two Guys One Podcast. Um, thanks for joining us. It's a little comedy show. My friend and I here, uh, we uh, talk about our lives and the world's events and uh, bring you some regular segments. You can find more info about us and about the show itself at twoguysonepod.com, as well as find links to talk back to us, email us, call us. You can be on the show. It's real easy, and you can find out more at twoguysonepod.com, especially with our 100th episode coming up. We're, uh, what is this, 95 now? So we're just like five weeks away, just over a month away from... Uh, the episode 100 that'll be our second anniversary and we want you to call and wish us a happy birthday call 504-613-5635 that's 504-613-5635 to wish us a happy birthday and you'll be part of episode 100 or tell us to go fuck ourselves sure you can do that too that'll probably make the that'll be more likely to make the show even perhaps Uh, so call us 504-613-5635 ready for the rundown sir i was born ready All right, then. We got a word of the day. Good, good. It's more 20 slang. Uh, We do, 1920 slang. Uh, We've got a... That's the berries, man. It is. Uh, We've got a... Who are these guys? We got an old news. Uh, We're going to follow up with some breaking news. I love old news still, my favorite segment. Uh, There's something about old people. They really are quite Because you're going to be one. You're going to be one, and it's... Will this crazy shit happen to me? Will I do something this ridiculous? Uh, last week, we, we told you a story in the breaking news segment about spiders in the gas tank. Well, we've got an even scarier story this week. Uh, that'll be our breaking news segment. And then we'll wrap things up with a word from Bob Ross. Digging it. Uh, let's go straight to the word of the day here to get started. All right, here's the way that we play Word of the Day. Uh, We bring you a phrase or a word uh, from the 1920s, very popular then, has fallen out of the vernacular, and we want to bring it back. Uh, And we're going to do that by using it in the show. I've actually been using it, some of it, like every day in real life. I know you. This is uh, this is maybe our favorite thing that we've done so far in the show for you, right? Yeah. yeah. This is this is the thing. Like uh, like code. Right now, for a hot chick, it's just calico. Oh, calico. Look, did you see the calico over there? Yeah. A whole purse yeah. full of calico. And unless you know, they don't have a fucking clue what you're talking about. I mean, context clues, sure, but you got I mean, you gotta hide it within something. Like you don't you're not obvious about it. I don't remember the comedian's name, but there was a you know, right when Every cable channel had a stand-up comedy show, like when when comedy kind of exploded in the early nineties. Nineties, yeah. Okay. It was a black comic, an African American comic. Uh, he would be on BET a lot, but he wasn't just on BET. He was on. He'd make the rounds on all of them. But his, uh, like his uh, shtick, his whole gag, boiled down to whenever he saw an attractive woman, his code for it was Shucky Ducky. Oh, Shucky Ducky. And I think he even like referred to himself as Shucky Ducky. But that's that's how he would acknowledge it. And the word itself was so innocuous that it wouldn't matter. But the way that he said it was so lascivious that it was obvious what he was talking about. And I always kind of thought, well, that was sneaky, but you not sneaky enough. I have no idea what you just said, and that's okay. Moving on. <laughs> All right, then. It's kind of like you with your calico. I was trying to, was trying I gotcha. to, re- to relate. I used the context. <laughs> Here's the word of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Dewdropper. Ooh, a dewdropper? Yeah. Uh, that's a... That's an alcoholic female that will suck your dick for a shot. Uh, that could be a good modern definition, perhaps. <laughs> That's not the 1920s definition. A uh, dewdropper, like a lollygagger. It's a slacker who sits around all day, does nothing, often unemployed. That's a dewdropper. It sits around like a leaf. Yeah, shiftless layabout. And then the dew drops off because the leaves don't fucking move. Exactly. 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 This is a dewy person because they're just laying around. Uh, so that's the word of the day. We'll try to use that uh, somewhere in the show today. Um, I think this is going to be an easy one to fit in. Yeah, I think so, too. All yeah. you're going to do is just say, you do drop or you. <laughs> I mean, no, that's shoehorning. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, uh, that would be do dropping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go to, let's do, let's do a who are these guys first. This is a great story. Who, who? Uh, 
Um, all right, so you and I have been working on this. Well, first of all, before we get to who are these guys, I can do what you wanted me to do earlier and plug our upcoming project. We got a new podcast. I don't care. You've ruined it. I've me. ruined it. What? No, it's the perfect time. I'm not- Here's the deal. It's another. It's this is another conversation boycott by other guy. No, I look. We what we were gonna do in the who are these guys? We were gonna tell a story that relates to a podcast that we're listening to and reviewing. Oh, you're ridiculous! <laughs> He's literally stepped away from the microphone, pushed it off to the side. So, uh, we've got a new show. We've got a new show, a new podcast uh, that's gonna premiere on Wednesday, May seventh. There's gonna be several episodes to download on day one. You can subscribe to it in iTunes. Of course, we're gonna have links for you. Uh, up on the Two Guys One Pod website uh, ASAP, but the show is called Pod on Pod, a guide to the world of podcasts because it's not your daddy's radio. Um, we love podcasts so much that we started this one, in fact, and as part of that, we want to make sure that everyone uh, out there, all these people who've never tried this new medium, know exactly what is on offer for them absolutely for free. It's so cool. There's so much entertainment to be had and all for free. So, uh, what we do is every week we review a different show, bring that to you in a, uh, a nice little uh, handy package, about 25, 30 minutes an episode. Uh, and we're going to review these shows based on four criteria audio quality, host likability, production values, and the content itself. Right now, this show sucks on host likability. <laughs> 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 One of our hosts is a dew dropper and won't join the conversation. So, <laughs> God damn it. That is karma. <laughs> That's what happens when you get lazy. Um, so, no, what happens though, you you and I will discuss the show based on these, these four criteria, then we'll also give it a rating. And of course, we could do thumbs up, thumbs down like Siskel and Ebert. We could give it, you know, out of four or five stars or whatever, but all of those have been done before. We wanted something original, something really for the medium. So, what do you listen to podcasts with? Your earbuds. So, we'll rate it out of a possible two earbuds each for a total of four for each show. Cool, huh? And we've only had one four earbud show so far. Yeah, we got five episodes in the can, and, and only one show has, has won uh, all of our praise. Uh, anyway, it's a, a cool show for you, for a lot of folks, maybe even that don't even listen to this show, because among other things, it'll be clean. So your mom can listen to it. More importantly, my mom can listen to it. Pod on Pod, a guide to the world of podcasts coming Wednesday, May 7th. Now, become a popper. Yes, become a popper. Uh, he's a popper. I'm a popper. You're a popper too. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I told that story to tell this story. In, in in listening to new shows, you and I uh, reviewed a show called What Say You. Yeah. Uh, you are already listening to this show. This is one of the ones that you subscribe to weekly, but I had not listened to it before. I'm now going to be a listener because uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a great show. Two comedians, uh, uh, Brian Quinn, Sal Vacano are the two, uh, the two hosts of the show. Occasionally they have guests, but it's really just the two guys. And in one of the episodes that we listened to, they discussed a game that they play amongst their friend base. Which is really similar to a game that we've played. Yes, yes. Which brings us to the but Who better. Are These Guys. Oh, so much better. It's, I, I likened it to you and I have been playing checkers, and they're playing chess. Like it's a it's a whole different level of game than than what you and I had played before. We've discussed it at length uh, in previous episodes. You and I both worked in outdoor drama. Yes. Uh, now every outdoor drama is uh, unique in its own way. They're all um, but always hokey. Beautiful snowflakes, but they are all definitely hokey. That's very very true. And of course, you might imagine that because of the nature of the requirements of the physical space for an outdoor drama. They tend to be in similar locations around the country, and therefore the stories for those outdoor dramas are very often similar, i.e. there's a ton of them, or used to be, a lot of them are closed now, but there used to be a ton of them that featured um, Davy uh, Davy Crockett, Daniel, Daniel Boone, Boone. Uh, you know, all of these, uh, uh, these cr- characters from American history. Uh, those were very, very popular. You'll have some every now and again that'll do, hey, we only do musicals that are outdoor drama, and so like we do Big River, and we do Carousel, and we do, you know, whatever. But mostly, it's Settlers and Indians. Like, that's the stories that you want to tell in these venues, right? Right, history. Yeah. yeah. So, 
the game that we're discussing here, the game that we played, that we came upon, and the first time I'd ever heard of it was when I worked at uh, Blue Jacket in uh, southern Ohio. Uh, and the idea is this. Anyone that knows about the game is playing, and all you have to do to win a point is to say a person's name, full name. So right. I, I would say Joel Sharpton. Uh, no, Joel, Joel Sharpton, King, King of, of the, the Wild, Wild Frontier. Frontier. Davy, Davy Crockett, King of the Wild Frontier. That's where it comes from. So, uh, and and any person's name you fit in there, as long as you get the full phrase out before they say no, no to interrupt you, then you've won a point. If they cut you off, then they've won a point. See, we played it as if you were gotten, you bought a case of beer. Oh, it had real stakes. Yeah. Ours was just an ongoing, you don't want to lose the game. I don't think we ever played for actual stakes. I mean, we might have played like, if you if you get gotten, maybe you get punched from six inches or something like that. No, dude. Everything everything we did had something on it. Like if you, alcohol related. <laughs> if you if you hooked up with a girl the night before, you didn't have to say anything about it. You didn't have to say who it was because it could have been embarrassing. But it was your duty to buy the crew the van you were in donuts on the way to work that morning. You didn't have to say anything, but if you said, guys, you I got the donuts. donuts, everyone knows what the fuck happened. <laughs> I got the donuts last night. <laughs> yeah. So you get the donuts this morning. That's funny. That's very funny. Uh, yeah, like every, everything we did had some kind of like beer food with it. I the, the, only, the only thing that I can recall from Blue Jacket that had like actual steaks involved was we played um, Dollar Saturday. Every Saturday night... At the circle before show, there was a bucket, and you wrote your name on a dollar or several dollars if you wanted, and threw in the pot. And they draw one name out of the pot, and that they won the pot. That dollar won whoever was on the dollar that they won the pot that night. I would have fucking cleaned y'all out. <laughs> you would have. We would have. We would have stopped letting you play. Is what would happen. Like we would have made you. We would have given you odds. Everybody else is even, but you got to put in. <laughs> you got to put in five to get. Did you get one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Other guys' money is only good in denominations of ten. Um, uh, but other than Dollar Saturday, I don't like. Like we didn't have any. Well, first of all, <laughs> I'm sure it was the case that you're outdoor drama too, but they don't pay actors anything at these places mostly dude i got paid pretty solid i'm gonna be honest <laughs> did you really yeah i also dude i got so lucky also i never had to pay for housing now see our housing always came it was part of our contract we did pay for housing it was taken out of our check and it was a very nominal rate i want to say it was like ten dollars a week or twenty dollars a week or I something paid like that. zero dollars a week and, that, and did you negotiate that before you went yeah why were this you is, in this such- is what kids dude this is what kids don't understand man People going into doing these, these contract this contract work, outdoor drama, to the tens of you out there thinking about <laughs> doing it. Um, everything. <laughs> this is so niche. Every it is. It's so niche. We just lost like, so many listeners. There's like four people on our show. That, that. But everything, everything can be negotiated. Fucking everything. Well, no, see that. And if applicable. you hold, and if you hold out for just long enough, these motherfuckers got to hit deadlines. So if you can keep them on the line long enough of negotiating back and forth, eventually it's going to hit the zero hour and you're going to get what you fucking want. Uh, so it sounds like to me, though, the the key there would be to largely sound agreeable but don't actually sign anything until the last moment. Yeah, yes. that all sounds good. And then when it's like, hey, we got to make the deal in a half hey, hour. Hey, I was just reading this. I like, thought we weren't paying for housing. Yeah, none of this stuff that we thought was included is included in this. You're going to have to change all of this. Yeah, and like, well, there's no, other, there's nowhere else to go to recast this. I don't see. I never found myself. I was always the guy that got like pulled in at the last second. Like, oh, all right, I guess we'll take Joel. Then. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm just happy to be here, guys. That's how. That's how I don't get the job because it's like, fuck you. We'll just pull him in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Joel. Joel was always waiting to take that job at the last minute. Oh. So, but there's not a lot of you out there like that, man. No, that's true. That's that's very true. I so if you get a fish on that line, man, 
Like I took I took all the extra gigs. Like I was like I I want to sing at the at the pre-show entertainment before the thing. I want to be part of the the choir the choir. I want to be a tour guide for our backstage tours. I want to be a uh, PR captain for when we go to uh, public relations events out in the community because all that shit paid extra. Like you got a little bonus, and you didn't get just paid. You didn't just get paid when you did it. You got paid every fucking dude, week a little extra. Dude, I could care less. I could give two fucks of whether I'm the lead or I'm driving the golf cart, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to hustle mine up front. <laughs> See, that was my problem. I didn't know there was any hustling to be done up front. I was just like, so, well, I guess this will be enough money. Hey, and then I got there and it was not enough and money. And that's why I'm a businessman. <laughs> Indeed. That's why I'm a podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so so in all that time when we didn't have any money <laughs> while we were being uh outdoor drama geeks um i one of the things that we i'm did waiting was, to see you bring this around well one of the things we did was we played this game we played uh, this this right uh, 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 uh king of the wild frontier and I thought it was a great game. Yeah, it was fun. Played it for years after I got out yeah. of the outdoor drama. Yeah. Uh, you, th our theater buddies and people we knew and if then you friends knew, you outside knew. of theater, right. you get into it and it, everybody seemed to like it. And I always thought, what a fun game. What a great thing. Q and Sal, though, in this one episode. Here's, here's the thing is, the, way, the game that we played could be very publicly loud and annoying. Oh, it could be incredibly publicly loud and annoying. Because... First of all, and that can be obnoxious. The no, the screaming of the no is is like yeah. emphatic, and and you panic, and you and you do it loud, and no, you know, all of a sudden yeah, yeah, out yeah. of anywhere. But also, Has flaws. you have to rush. Th like at some point, the game is up, the jig is up when you're halfway through the 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 saying of the person's name, and therefore you have to rush through the rest of it, and it, it's just unwieldy. It's, right. it's very great childish. idea. And and there's no way to hide your intention really. Like you mostly have to rely on the fact that the other party is unfocused to slip it in. Whereas, that's how I got my four kids. <laughs> that's, that's, that's just I was, I was just about to say that's a good way to get a woman pregnant too. Wait for her to be unfocused and <laughs> slip it in. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> So Q and Sal, they discussed this game that they've been playing for more than 10 years. Effectively, the rules are the same as ours, except, again, it just takes it to a whole other level. Their game is called Dave Thomas, Founder of Wendy's. And unlike our game, you don't have to say a long thing and trap somebody in it, and you don't even have to wait for them to be unfocused or not paying attention. Very specifically, you have to intrigue them and pull the other party into your conversation to be able to score the point. The whole point of this game is to force the other party to say, who? And then you can answer, Dave Thomas, founder of Wendy's. Yes. Yes, and and uh, as long as you know about the game, and as long as uh, you get the other person to say who, then you have won. But you got to come correct because if the other person sniffs you out, they get the point. Indeed, as as I did to you just the other right. day. Right, it's one zero. <laughs> uh, now I say you. It was maybe the greatest. I don't know. I don't know that there'll ever be an opportunity for you to find a better setup than you did the other day. And I w did not know until I was saying the name Dave Thomas, founder of Wendy's, that you were actually playing. I was just thinking, what a great opportunity that would have been. Yeah. Anyway, so there's the game. All you got to do to play it is tell, tell somebody about it, or if uh, even better, share this podcast with them, and then they know about it. And then you're playing already. Uh, just try to get them to say who, and then you can say Dave Thomas, founder of Wendy's, and score a point on your buddy. I love it. It sucks getting caught. It it, it does. It's miserable. Uh, I haven't, having not done both sides of it yet, I can't tell you whether it sucks worse getting caught than it is hey, awesome catching someone. I haven't done someone. both sides of it yet, apparently, either. <laughs> it's, this is, maybe it'll be the opposite of Catan. Maybe Dave Thomas found her Wendy's is my I'll game. I'll never win. Maybe it's my game. <sighs> Who knows? That, that would be interesting. Uh, before uh, we get too old playing this game, no, that's a terrible transition. There was no way to transition. Give me a transition.
I'm trying what, to play what old what news. About? I want to go to old news. Uh, oh, speaking of, uh, so Dave Thomas, founder of Wendy's, speaking of other people who are almost in the grave. <laughs> Dave's not almost. He is, thankfully. If he was out of the grave, we've got an undead situation, uh, and an undead hamburger well, I mean, cooker is physically he's in the grave, problem. but we're keeping that spirit. The spirit is alive. Right. There you go. Okay. Uh, let's go to old news. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Why, you old fool. What? I'm not your son, and my name's not Shine. <laughs> he calls me an old fool. This comes from the New York Daily News.com. You sent me this last week, and it was all I could do not to use it on last week's episode, even though I already had an old news. So I, I saved it. I'm glad it I did. I'm even better. I'm even more glad now that you've forgotten it. Maybe I mean, this you didn't is read two it. weeks. This is two weeks removed, right? Yes. Yeah, I don't have a clue. Uh, okay, so the headline: Romanian thugs brutally. Sp- oh, <laughs> no, oh my God! I do remember. Oh my God! This is amazing. You, you got. You got. Holy so, shit! You got so excited they couldn't even hear the headline. The headline: Romanian thugs brutally spin elderly woman, <laughs> and there is a fucking video. God. <laughs> Uh, I haven't watched the video yet, by the way. Did you watch the video? <laughs> no, I couldn't get you past just, the you headline. You just had the headline, and then you're like, I don't I don't even want to know. Let's just talk about it later. There is a video. We'll watch the video in a minute, and, and then we're going to put that video up on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two guys, one pod. Uh, I'll probably tweet it out too. Tw- uh, t- is, on Twitter at two guys one pod. That is ridiculous. I immediately when I when I read that, I immediately went to Mel Brooks Blazing Saddles when they're riding through the town and they're beating the old lady. And she's like, <laughs> "Oh, the terror!" Uh, Romanian police are looking for a gang of young thugs who swung a terrified elderly woman around in circles. One man spins the old lady around twice despite her screams for help. The men recorded the incident, which has now made its way online, uh, reports Metro. The footage shows a gang of up to six men hanging around outside a bar in the village of uh, Helavia, close to the capital, capital Bucharest. As the woman walks past, one of the men picks her up and spins her around repeatedly. Okay, so so here's the list. I didn't play the video. I did see the still of it, right? Mm-hmm. So when it says picks her up and spins her out, I in my head I'm go oh he picks her up under her arms I mean because she was like and then just he rotates and she turns you know like you were like a little kid yeah right Mm-mm. it look we're gonna have to watch the video man but yeah the photo it, looks like he's got that chick by her ankles uh, so and it's like death spinning her around is what it looks like from the steel so she she walked past he grabs her spins her around several times. And and then she lets her go. She runs off, and he's laughing and joking with his buddies about how big his muscles are. He's egged on to do it again. His friends are like, ha, ha, that was awesome, that was awesome, do it again. So he chases he the old lady He chases the down. old lady. Yes, he chases the old lady down and spins her for a second time. Police say they are making inquiries now and press, and will press charges once they have identified the men in the video. Where is this at? This is in Romania. It's, uh, just outside of Bucharest, the capital. Uh, all right, here, I'm going to try to open this. Man, I so I so thought it was gonna be the Ukraine, because then I was gonna say, talk about throw mama from Ukraine. <laughs> That's terrible. All right, how are we gonna do this? Where can, where we can both? Wait a minute. Oh my god! Oh my god! That is fucking nuts. <laughs> that old lady is <clears throat> awesome, though. Okay, first of all, first of all, that old... I want to see him chase her down. <laughs> he did. He just. Oh my, oh my god. god! Oh my god! Oh my god, it's about a 33 second video. I hate to, I I do Holy feel Holy fuck. I do feel a little bad for laughing because like Granny is He grabs her by By her shoulders. Yeah, like the like you would a cat. Like a, like you grab a cat by like the scruff of her neck almost. Like he's got her by both shoulders. shoulders. I don't know if she I mean, I guess he grabbed like her coat. I wish Andre was here and he could tell us what they were saying. 
Oh man, that lady is looks old too, and she's she not does. very big. No, she's tiny. I mean, she looks like she might be like four feet tall. You know, like she's literally she's like a foot and a half shorter than any of these guys in this video, and they just manhandle her, man. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what a fucking story. I'm kind of glad I waited to watch that. <laughs> I am too. That was crazy. She's in the whole time. She, ah, ah. What, do you think, what do you think she tells her cats whenever she gets home? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like she's got pigs, maybe, not cats. Oh man, she was like, ah, ah. yes. <laughs> No, but if you if you're her, that's a much harder story to tell. If Here's, you're him, it's he's like, oh, the old lady was walking down the street. I picked her up. I swung her around. Spun her around a little. Muscles was, very big. He was funny, so I did it again. <laughs> very big muscles. I let her run for a little while. Then I chase after. I pick her up again. She, but if she's her, but if but if you're her, how do you tell the story? Uh. <laughs> I got I got picked up and spun. <laughs> but then they go, "What do you mean? What do you What, what do you mean you got well, picked up?" I and think spun. you could just I think you could just describe it as a, uh, some 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 boys threw me around. You know, like I. Like but no, some, that's literally like whenever you think I got thrown around, it's like somebody just shoved you into a wall or whatever. They that her chick up and threw her around, <laughs> around and around and around. I, w- I mean, I want to know where she put the ticket for that ride. I want to know why the Romanian uh, government isn't supporting their shot put team better. Discus. Damn it! I was, hammer I was throw. F- so fucking close. Hammer throw. That's what it is. It's and These guys are practicing for the hammer throw. That's exactly what it is. In Romania, we have the money for weights. <laughs> <laughs> we just throw grandma. <laughs> <laughs> it's like their strong like their strongman competition is uh you ever see like on a world's strongest man where they they have like this they're lifting up this cart but then a barrel rolls into that cart and it gets heavier and heavier and they lift that and then another barrel oh, rolls into yeah, the cart. Oh yeah, yeah. They're just throwing grandmas in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up to 47 grandmas. <laughs> I did uh, I did 10 revolutions with the 50 pound grandma this week. It was a good day. <laughs> and because they don't have like any uh any like social security or anything like that's how grandmas have to take those jobs. <laughs> oh hell yeah, that's it's a paid position right yeah. there. <laughs> So There's uh, a union. So what do you do, Grandma? I am, I am barrel. I am, I am, I am hammer throw. <laughs> oh, Where is Peter Dinklage when you need him? Oh, that's fucked up, dude. That is so fucked up. They made a uh, they made a, a Peter Dinklage uh, dwarf throwing joke on at midnight. Uh, which I watched earlier, before I came in to record this. And here's what's here's what I thought I thought that was tacky, dude. And here's why. After the first season, maybe the second season, whenever he won the um, what is it called for television? The uh, Emmy. Sure. <laughs> okay. Anyway, whenever he won the award, he mentioned another uh, another dwarf who who had died from midget throwing in England. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why I thought it was real tacky for them to make that joke. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't remember yeah, that. You did at the award like show? Asshole. Yeah. I mean, I guess it is a... Well, I don't... I mean, it's not... I mean, I guess... No, it's oh, pretty don't terrible. don't profit out of this one. <laughs> oh, I was trying... I was looking for the way to retreat. There's, there's not... <laughs> uh, fuck it. I give up. <laughs> <laughs> Where's where's Jean Pierre? <laughs> you can't blame that dude. <laughs> Make me a retreat, tutu. <laughs> <laughs> it's just white. That's right. All right. Uh, uh, be sure you do not uh, shit yourself in this <laughs> tutu. It is white for a reason. It, it will be noticeable. <laughs> uh, let's go. To it is bad go. enough. You are a guy who <laughs> retreats. Trust me. I know very well. Well, the point is, you got to run backwards, though, so the shit stains don't show. You just got to back up. What if you piss yourself? <laughs> well, then you shit out of luck. 
Uh, let's go to breaking news. So last week we talked about spiders in the gas tank. The uh, the recall for who was it? Mazda. I don't, I don't know. know. But the whole thing <laughs> seems silly. All right. How about snakes in the fucking school? High school closed. This comes from Huffington Post. High school closed due to onslaught of snakes. What kind of snakes? Schools closed, kids. No. Uh, Classes at high school in southern Kyrgyzstan were suspended. Hey, hey, that's what happens when you get kicked out of Hogwarts. Sorry, (laughs) Harry. Uh, Where's the parcel tongue? That's right. Uh, classes at a high school in southern Kyrgyzstan were suspended Tuesday due to an onslaught of snakes, a school spokesman told Russian news agency Interfax. A spokesperson said that since the beginning of spring, as many as 30 snakes have been sighted every day in the 144-student facility. Now, I'm not real good on math, but real quick, it looks to me like that's like, I don't know, a quarter of your student body is made up one, one for one with snakes sighted daily? What the fuck, man? Would you? Here's the deal. 30 snakes a day? Where was Where's the school at again? Kyrgyzstan. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> the Kyrgyzstanians do. Who? Hey, then don't build shit where snakes are. Uh, when public health officials were unable to rid the building of the reptiles, the Emergency Situations Ministry made the call to suspend classes. Interfax didn't specify the kind of snakes involved, but Gawker helpfully tracked down a website titled Wildlife of Wildlife of Kyrgyzstan, which lists the dozen or so varieties found in the region. Dude, if you to find the culprit of, for all these snakes, you just find the student who is doing the worst. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're saying a kid is sabotaging school? He's, instead of the old "my dog ate my homework," he's like. <laughs> Snakes attack my school, so we can't do that. It's, it's the kid that's been bullied, man. Right? He doesn't want to go to school because this asshole's picking on him every day, right? Uh, sure. So he'd rather just not have to go to school. So, hey, let me release a bunch of snakes in this school, add a couple every day, and if I get lucky, this fuckhead gets bitten and dies. It's a win-win for me. <laughs> Worst case scenario, they'll have to shut down eventually and I'll get to go home and won't have to deal with this. Boom. I don't think that's uh, the case probably, but uh, it, it's it, one potential. Hey, they put you and me on the case. We could probably jack this thing down. Hey. Do it a little Law & Order Kyrgyzstan style. It's usually the simplest answer, man. <laughs> Find the worst kid in the school. Uh, Kyrgyzstan schools aren't the only place that uh, people who are afraid of snakes should stay away from, though. In 2011, a school in California closed because of a rattlesnake infestation, according to CBS. How, now, is, that, how is that even an issue? Let me tell you something, though. Uh, what do you mean, how is that in A fucking rattlesnake will kill you. How'd that snake get its name? Because there's a rattle on the end of it? And why is it rattle? As a warning? Then stay the fuck away from sound. Okay, but I'm saying, if there are multiple rattlesnakes in your school... You're going to walk up on it, and it'll rattle, yeah, and then it will bite your ass. Hey, maybe you just got to get used to carrying a ladder. <laughs> a ladder? Yeah. To hold them off with? What? No. If you to hear, get up on? If, yeah, if you hear a rattle, <laughs> set the ladder out, climb up one side, climb down the other, you away from that snake. A snake can't slither up a, a ladder? If, look, dude, I can't if a rattlesnake is... You ever, see it, you ever see a... On any goddamn documentary, you ever see a rattlesnake rattling while it's slithering? Well, no. When is that fucking snake rattling? When it's coiled, ready to strike. As long as it's <laughs> rattling, it's either rattling or striking. It ain't fucking moving. But I'm saying, then you put the ladder up and it's like, oh, oh, I got something for your ass. <laughs> Let me climb up that ladder, motherfucker. Where you gonna go now? Dude, I'm pretty sure I could get down a ladder faster than a rattlesnake could get up it. <laughs> I don't know, but I wouldn't want to bet my life on it. <laughs> Let me tell you the difference, though. This is the reason I bring up the story about the rattlesnakes in California. You, rattlesnake is the best snake infestation to have. <laughs> I disagree. If you're going to have a snake, <laughs> if you're going to have a poisonous snake how about infestation. Water, how, about, how about a water moccasin? No, That's not a, a bad water, idea. Not a water moccasin. I was going to Well, yes, no, a water moccasin, and then I'll drain all the water and they'll all die. 
I don't think you understand. The <laughs> water moccasins work. <laughs> well, what about? I was gonna say like a. Well, would you rather have a copperhead, cotton mouth? No. A black mamba. I was I was an thinking ass, there was a, no. an adder, a frog lant. Hey, hey, you know those little uh, 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 black snakes that you um, that you uh, um, you know you put the little lighter thing on and then they grow a little bit out of the fireworks box. Those an infestation of the black <laughs> fireworks snakes. It's the cutest little infestation <laughs> ever. Cutest infestation of all time. Uh, the reason I bring up the California infestation though, okay, so the Kyrgyzstan school they shut down only after they were having. 30 snakes sighted every day for a long, long time. The school in California with a rattlesnake infestation, how big do you think their infestation was? Two. They had five five rattlesnakes. See, that ain't even a big deal. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to go to school with five rattlesnakes. If a kid walks up on a rattlesnake and gets bitten, that's a dumb fucking kid. But also it's a barrier, so the next kid will be less likely to be bitten, right? I mean, there's there's one dead kid there, so now... Harder for the snake to get across to the next one. Well, no, and it's going to take the rattlesnake some time to build up some more venom. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. Do they? Eat, do the rattlesnakes eat what they kill? Not if they kill a person. <laughs> well, I mean, like a python will eat a person over time, right? A rattlesnake won't eat a person? I, d- <laughs> I don't know a person a small enough for a rattlesnake to eat. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> A good point, I suppose. <laughs> good point. It had to be a big fucking rattlesnake. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Then good that point. would be a terrible infestation. <laughs> so you're saying? So you're saying rattlesnake digestion is not something that I need to fear, probably. No. <laughs> okay. Two guys one pod dot com. That's our home base, ladies and gentlemen. We bring you free funny every Sunday right here at two guys one pod dot com, and available on your iPhone, on your Android device, through Stitcher, through YouTube, on Facebook. You can even stream us. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, or subscribe to the channel on YouTube and get new episodes uh, every week. As a matter of fact, I haven't even mentioned this to you, but you know what I'm doing now. So we're posting the new episode on YouTube every Sunday, uh, along with our regular audio podcast. You can listen, you can sort of watch it and listen to it there on YouTube. Uh, But every Wednesday, I'm posting a classic episode of Two Guys, One Pod on the YouTube page as well. That's so classic. Uh, that's right. Just so a little little something extra for you. So go back and check out some of the old episodes. We've got great stuff up there from... You ain't do dropping. No, indeed, man. I'm hustling. Uh, our mutual friend, he's got a couple of episodes up there. Our holiday friend up a couple of episodes as well. Littlest Sensei is there now. That uh, guy? That guy's on there. Uh, Diamond Jim uh, as well. And even... Uh, let's see. Have I put an episode of the... Gypsy Tycoon up. I'm not sure whether I put his episode up or not. Anyway, go check it out. It's all happening. Man, at, I haven't um, seen that dude in a minute. I'm telling you, he's a fucking gypsy. He's in. Uh, he's becoming a pharmacist currently. That is his current status. Like a pharmacist? No, no like a pharmacist. Like okay. an actual, like, you know, give you drugs and shit. Not give you drugs, <laughs> but, you know, write you prescriptions for drugs. Not you, but people who need drugs. Uh... You know who we're talking to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know who we're talking to. The do droppers. If you think this message is for you, you are probably correct. You're probably correct. Um, I don't know what else I was going to say. I was going to wrap it up, and I guess that's about it. Now time for a word yeah, from Bob course, Ross. Yeah, a word from Bob Ross. All right, well, let's, uh, let's, let's zen out, have our uh, moment of relaxation uh, with the guru himself, word from Bob Ross. Speaking of, for those of you that love this segment, uh, next week we're going to have a little something special for old Bob. Can we call him Yogi Bob Ross? Uh, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. I don't think oh, Yogi's a title that. No, what the fu- what the fuck are they called? Uh, yogis. No. Like, oh, you're uh, talking about Guru. Guru. Now is it Guru? Yeah. The dude that helped the Beatles was a Guru. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Guru. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Guru okay. Bob. Guru Bob. I. I I I personally subscribe to the multiple guru uh, theory. I some of my gurus, uh, Willie Nelson is one of my guru uh, gurus. Uh, Jeff Bridges is a guru. Bob Ross is a guru. They all got awesome hair in common. That's one thing we got going for them. Uh, here's your word from Bob Ross. You can get more at bobrossquotes.com. Little squirrels and rabbits. And if this was in Florida or Georgia somewhere down there, it might be an alligator or two hid back there. Little squirrels and rabbits. 
And if this was in Florida or Georgia somewhere down there, might be an alligator or two hid back here. That's your word from Bob Ross today. Uh, there are lots of alligators hid back here, I promise. If there's alligators hid back there, there won't be no squirrels or rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. It's very true. There'd also be no snakes. The snakes, the squirrels, the rabbits all get the fuck out of the way for the alligator. Bob Ross will be gone too. <laughs> Happy mistake, my ass. Happy little trees would would remain. That alligator would be like, there ain't no mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> alligator said that was fate, motherfucker. Uh, enjoy uh, your your week, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for joining us right here at twoguysonepod.com. Until next week, I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the podcast. la ti da <laughs>